friends, welcome back to the Triple W PlanetAvenger.com, where we just don't want to hear the news. We want to understand that news. And the news that I'd like you to understand this week involves the sledgehammer <laughs> dropping on Turkey. What? Turkey? What did they do? That's right, it ain't Thanksgiving, but let's talk Turkey. Let's entitle this podcast Sledgehammer Tenderizes the Turkey. <laughs> Sometimes I'm too good to be that good. What's the sledgehammer? What's this got to do with current Turkish politics and Turkey's place in the world, in the region, and the planet? Uh, before we even get to the sledgehammer, though, here's why you should care. Here's what's important about Turkey. Turkey is uh, it's, it's awesome. You should visit Turkey. Uh, but Turkey's quite unique in today's world for a whole variety of factors. I'm fascinated by Turkey. Uh, and some of the reasons it's quite unique is that it's 100% Islamic. Well, that doesn't make it unique. Most Middle Eastern countries are Islamic. But it's 100% Islamic, but it's also a staunch democracy. It's probably the most successful Islamic democracy on planet Earth, and, and that's kind of an experiment in itself that's fascinating. More so than even that, though, is they're very secular. That's right, it's 100% Islamic, but they separate church and state, and they keep that very distinct. Uh, uh, even more important than that, Turkey, while a lot of folks consider part of the Middle East, I don't, uh, but it, it is very pro-Western. Uh, it wants to be part of the EU. Uh, it's very modernized and industrialized in its major cities. People dress in Western dress. I mean, it's an Islamic country, but about half the population looks like they could be in Western Europe. Uh, so they're very pro-EU, uh, pro-Western, industrialized, modernized, hip, cool, chill, but of most importance to you, Turkey's a huge U.S. ally. I don't think people know that in America. Huge U.S. ally. Turkey's been on Team America since World War II. Turkey is a member of NATO, the most important strategic military alliance on planet Earth. Turkey typically goes along with U.S. foreign policy and supports all U.S. things all the time. Almost all the time. So Turkey's quite important for a variety of factors that it, it doesn't really fit in well in, say, the Middle East or Europe or anywhere else. They're quite unique and fascinating. And that's why you should care about this place and understand why this news story is of a consequence. Good, let's get to that news story then. The Sledgehammer! What's that all about? The Sledgehammer is a nickname been given to an uncovered coup plot, supposedly, uh, and a coup plot which was supposedly hatched by Turkish military folks. That sounds strange already. Uh, and this plot, uh, uh, supposedly, uh, has at its core the destabilization of the Turkish government that the Turkish military was going to blow up a couple of mosques inside of Turkey and agitate the Greeks into shooting down a Turkish plane, all in an effort to destabilize the Turkish government uh, and create fear and panic on the streets, which would open the doors for the Turkish military to come in, wipe out the government, and install a new one. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? This is crazy, bizarro Turco world. I mean, that sounds very crazy to folks on the other side of the uh, the pond here. Why would a, a military of a country want to destabilize and overthrow its own government? It's got everything to do in Turkey with this whole idea that it's a secular state. The military... Uh, by the way, before I go any further, about, uh, this is alleged. Right? I'm not saying this is true. I'm not saying it was in action. Uh, there are 30 to 50... Turkish military folks currently under arrest, being investigated for this. Uh, lots of folks in Turkey say that this is completely BS, that this is a smear campaign by the government to make the Turkish military look bad. Uh, but lots of other folks in Turkey say, oh no, the Turkish military is a little scary and they're trying to smear the government and overthrow them. So right there from the get-go, we would say, whoa, 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 what's going on? Why would the two forces within the same country be working against each other? Ah. That gets to the heart of the matter. That's what we want to understand. You can't understand the sledgehammer without understanding this stuff. And this stuff's based on Turkey's secular nature, separation of Islam from the state, and that's the duty of the military to ensure that. And why would they suddenly be wanting to have a coup to overthrow the government? Because the current government uh, is controlled by a political party that's Islamist based. Ah, there we go. Now we're starting to have some red flags flown up here. The AK party, a translation is the Justice and Development Party, uh, is the most popular political party in Turkey right now. Uh, the president of Turkey, Abdullah Gul, is one of the founding members of the AK party as well as the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is kind of the head honcho of Turkey. Prime Minister Recep Erdogan uh, is an AK Party member as well. Uh, and the AK Party controls the majority 
uh, of, say, the Congress. Uh, the AK party is pretty popular in Turkey. Obviously, there's about half the people or more of Turkey support these guys and vote for them. Why would that upset the military so much? Because the AK party is Islamist-based. Uh, I'm trying to choose my words carefully here so I don't offend my Turkish friends. Uh, they're an uh, Islamic-based political party. They are under, n never have said that we are trying to make Turkey into an Islamic state. Uh, Erdogan and Gull and everybody else who works for the AK have said time and time again, we are not trying to make this into a religious state, but we are very religious people. We're very uh, uh, Islamic. We're proud Muslims. And we see, see no problem with making our state perhaps a little more in line with Muslim ideals. And for you Americans to understand this a little bit better, uh, this is, I think, this is my interpretation, it's kind of like, uh, you ever heard of the Moral Majority in America or the Christian Coalition? Uh, or there's a host of parties across uh, Europe, political parties, that usually have the word Christian or uh, you know, Christian Democrats. These are political parties, and I think the AK party is among them. Uh, uh, Moral Majority, AK uh, party, Christian uh, Coalition. These are parties that say, look, we're not trying to make this into a religious state. But we're religious, all right? And we believe in our religion, and we don't have any problem uh, with, say, prayer in schools. So maybe the Christian coalition says, oh, we're not trying to put the Pope in charge of America, but we would like prayer in schools. We would like to have more of our religion as part of our society and affecting more of our society. And I believe that's where the AK is, okay? That's probably where the AK party is. They are very uh, 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 religious, uh, and they see no problem with that but since uh, Turkey is 100% Islamic altogether. So that's what the AK is all about and that's what frightens the military a bit. Because the military's job, as they see fit, is to make sure that Turkey doesn't become too Islamic in its leadership. I mean they're all Islamic, they're all Muslims, but not in the government. Turkey is a staunchly secular state. And I'll say it again just to make sure in case you missed it the first time. A secular state like America, like most European countries, uh, is a state where the government is over here, the people who run the state are over here, and the religious people are over there. I mean, and never the two shall meet. That is what a secular state is all about. And this has historic roots in the very formation of Turkey itself. That's why it's so important. And this is why that perhaps, if this isn't true, that some folks in the Turkish military would hatch a plot to destroy their own government. It is part of their history to do so. What am I talking about? Have I lost my Turkish mind? No. Turkey was really formed in the modern era in 1923. Uh, they used to be the mighty Ottoman Empire, Islamic Ottoman Empire, way back in the day that controlled most of the Middle East and parts of Europe. Uh, but after World War I, when they got their asses handed to them by the European powers, the Europeans came in and kind of divided up and cut up their uh, big empire uh, and into states you probably recognize today. Oh, we'll put Iraq over here and there's Lebanon. Uh, and Turkey is kind of the, the die-hard core what the remnants of the Turkish Ottoman Empire. And it's Turkish ethnicity and it's Turkish people, and they named it Turkey. Uh, and they held their little piece of their state together under their uh, most popular historical figure, uh, a leader and general by the name of Mustafa Kemal, uh, AKA Ataturk, the father of the Turks. He is extremely important uh, in Turkey's history, but even Turkey today, uh, and really, impacted the state in a very huge way. Well, what's so great about him? What do you do? I mean, Mustafa Kemal, Ataturk, uh, to put it in context, he's kind of like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and Gandhi, and Jesus Christ all rolled together for the Turks. I mean, he is the man. He is what created them. He was a sense of national pride, the father of the country, and, and, and was a military leader who helped stave off the Europeans from coming in and taking over. So he is of the most biggest essence of everything Turkish, and he's quite important. And here's what he did that was so important, which is still affecting Turkey today. When he took charge in 1923, he uh, uh, said, hey, look, I'm a military man. And the reason we lost is because the Europeans were uh, superior to us militarily, technology, uh, industrially. So we were going to catch up. So Ataturk set about in 1923 to modernize the state, uh, make it cooler, faster, uh, uh, make more stuff, also modernize the military, and uh, make it more Western uh, socially and culturally. They adopted Western dress. Because basically he said, look, the West, was, they beat us. So let's be more like them. And the last thing he did of most consequence is said, hey, like the West, we need to make this a secular state. <laughs>